All right. Uh, hi. Uh, been a while. Um, I am back for a quick video that was asked for me by one of my students. So we're going to talk a little bit about wrists today. Um, now, wrists are obviously like a, a they're a super important part of robots, right? Um, and effectively what they are is they're just a little arm, right? Um, so today we're going to do a little bit of a exercise in designing a wrist. Um, and we're going to pattern off of one of my personal favorite robots from the 2022 season. Um, this bad boy from team 581. Um, and 581 built an incredible robot this year. Um, and I was so sad that I didn't get to see it at champs. Um, this robot was is a super cool robot. It has a lot of things um, that um, I would love to dig into, but we're just going to focus on the wrist, and we're going to focus on basically trying to emulate something like this wrist, um, except for with with some COTS parts. Um, so I know a lot of teams still use custom tube stuff. Um, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna play with it and use a bunch of kind of revs, um, max tube stuff, um, and hopefully that'll be cool. And then I'll share that with y'all when I'm all done. Um, so uh, one of the things that this also gives me a chance to talk to is uh, something that um, anybody that's ever cloned a mechanism will ever will be able to tell you is a thing. Um, so. We're going to estimate some of these dimensions. Uh, we're probably not going to make something exactly the same dimensions, but um, one of the primary ways that we estimate dimensions when you're like copying something like this is, especially when a team is nicely giving you a whole pattern like this, um, is you can look at this and you can count what all these holes are. And so if we count this up on this lengthwise piece, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. So this piece is probably 17 or 18 inches long. And then this cross beam, it's a little bit hard to tell because we got a low res injure thing here. Well, that's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12. So we got probably a 13 inch piece here in the middle. Um, mm -hmm. And since we're going to do this out of max tube, uh, we're going to keep it to just some cots lengths here. So um, if we're saying this thing should be about 18, um, 18 inches long, and then the inside of it is probably something like 13 plus like a quarter inch for these plates, plus like another half inch on each of the sides. So it's probably like four. 15 and a half, 15 and a half in the middle. So I think I think we'll do what we'll do is we'll just make this, we'll make our frame 15 by whatever uh out of 15 inch tube. Um and that'll be that for this. Obviously, if you're trying to copy them closer, you might um do something a little bit different. But that I think is gonna be for our purposes. And we'll also note some things about this design. So we can see that we got some two down here and then we got this pivot and there's just this bolt on the inside so it doesn't look like that's a hex bolt a hex shaft going across it might be um but uh it also might not be i never got a chance to look at this robot um so like one of the things that if you look at this right so we got this big u shape here right effectively this is creating so one of the things that you might do to get yourself a little bit of structure on the end here is make this part of it what's called a dead axle, which means that the axle doesn't necessarily rotate. This entire thing is just pivoting on that. So I think that that's what we'll do here for us is um, we'll make this a dead axle out here. And then the other thing we'll note here is it looks like if we zoom in on this, right? It looks like we've got a chain tensioner in here. Um, and this is, you'll see these on a lot of different like arms or wrists. Um, but it's going to be especially useful for us recreating this in MaxTube um, because what it'll do is it'll mean that we don't really care 
uh, we, we don't really care exactly what the length uh, between these, whatever our, our pivot and this is, I think it's going to be exact anyways, but we don't really care that much. Um, and the reason that we don't care is because we'll be able to take up whatever slack we get uh, in a tensioner. Um, we do care about a couple of other things though. And one of those things is going to be um, how much space that tensioner has to move. So we'll just ballpark this, right? We'll say, say the tensioner is two inches, right? And we're going to use a... What do we got? What, what's sprockets? Tell me how much a sprocket is. Tell me what kind of sprockets you got here. Rev. Uh, we'll say we'll use this 48 tooth sprocket, right? Um, and knowing those things, right? Knowing we got like two inches of that and a 48 tooth, tooth sprocket, we can think about this and say, okay, we're going to, this thing's going to turn and we need probably. Um, so like if we were just going to, from like straight up to flat, we would need about 90 degrees of motion, but we're also going to go back. So let's say we need like 135 degrees of motion out of that. Um, or, uh, what is that? That's, um, whatever, a quarter plus 12.5, right? Um, so that might mean that we want to give this thing at least half of that, the amount of teeth on the sprocket, um, worth of movement for that chain tensioner. So whatever this distance is, we probably want it to be more than 24 times 0.25, then 24 times 0.25 plus two inches. So we want probably like eight inches of free and clear chain um, to be able to adequately tension this thing. Um, and this has been a lot of talking, um, but since we're kind of copying things, I want to talk through some of the like key considerations here. Um, one of the things you'll notice about this guy um, is it looks like 581 has this attached to a plate that's on this. Looks like they have some sort of two standoff across this. That's probably for structural reasons. Um, and then this max planetary with probably a falcon is standoff into the inside of this thing. So I think that we might we might emulate that. Um, and then that's all attached to this um, this carriage. I'm not going to delve into the elevator or carriage design. I'm not going to delve into the intake design. Uh, what we'll probably do is we'll do like a sort of pseudo intake, uh, like a pseudo mounting point thing here, uh, just so you get kind of an idea of, of what we're doing, what we're dealing with here. Um, doing it this way is nice. The, the way that they did it with this is nice um, because you don't, you're basically going directly from whatever gear ratio you want directly to there. Um, there are kind of fancier ways that you can like reverse things or move stuff out. I think we're going to try to emulate that simplicity um, for our sake and and just, just do that. So I'm going to pull it over to our CAD model and I've already done a little bit of work on it. So kind of, kind of catch you up um, on that. So we're going to pop over to our wrist um, and you can see this is this is roughly what we're looking at right now. So we got we got a max planetary. This max planetary um, right now is kind of in line. What we'll probably do is we'll um, we'll we'll stand this off um, a little bit into here, and we'll use some uh, standoffs to do that. Um, and then we'll just run a direct chain from here to here. And because of how these work, we can say that's going to be 12 inches. So if these were one to one, which they probably won't be, um, that would be fine for us. It's probably going to be a larger to a smaller. Um, so that'll be even more funny. All right. Um, so first let's fix this guy. We'll, we'll offset this. So it has a fasten mate right now. 
here. Um, we will offset that by like negative image. Um, and that'll leave us basically with a nice bit sticking into the tube for support. And then we can insert some spacers um, and we're gonna go like, and this is the MKCAT app. I'm gonna use it as a kind of an example because I know a lot of people like it and uh, I am trying to pull myself into using what more people are using here. Um, that being said, it's not, I guess I'm gonna have to add those 10 pick ads sometime in the near future. Uh, so we'll go in here and we'll just add those up. So we know that we're gonna put it back here um, and we're gonna use some, some kind of standard like West Coast products um, ones. Those are 0.375 inches. Uh, and we'll just extrude that by an inch. That'll be a new guy. And then what we're also gonna do, because this is max tube, and um, I like to kind of demonstrate some good practices, what we'll also do is we'll add a 0.75 inch one in here. Um, and I'm gonna do this all the lazy way. So we're gonna add, we're not gonna do this with like super great um, catting practices. So we're just gonna make two separate ones in there. And then we're gonna use two separate ones in here. Um, and we use that. And the use tool is my one of my favorite on shape commands. And we can just all make the, make those equal. Um, and I just realized that, that should be fine. Okay, cool. Um, and we'll go up to face on this part. Cool. Um, and then, oops, I accidentally made those part of that somewhere else. Okay. So now what we'll need is we'll need a two inch long, probably like a two and a half inch bolt going straight through there. Um, and that will let us do this. Um, you can do this in other ways as well. So like we could do this as a printed part. We could do this um, in all sorts of other ways. This is just how I'm going to do it for you here today. There's a lot of pathways to creating an acceptable CAD model for FRC. Um, and see, this is not necessarily my favorite in terms of how like cantilever and everything this is. So if um, if I was gonna do a little bit more with this, I might, for example, like kind of design a, a corner plate and I might do, I'll do that just for, for our purposes here. Um, so this is, why do you want minimum distance? We care about center axis distance in this house. We got 1.5 inches from there and then between these two, it's another 1.5 inches. So we're gonna design a little corner gusset for this that, that uses those. So, um, and that'll just give us a little bit more to work with here. Um, and this isn't gonna be necessarily ideal. So um, it actually, actually I'll show you why. Um, so let's say we're going to do, we'll, we'll, we'll do our, um, this guy, we'll put in a chain here. And I'm going to use the chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, we got, so we're going to talk about the chain generator. And we're going to make this in place. It's going to be between this guy and this guy. We're going to offset it by like half an inch. And we're going to use our, uh, what does that look like? So what is our 
24 tooth. Just make sure that I know what I'm expecting out of that. Cool, cool. So yeah, 24 tooth probably on one. So do 24 to 48. That's going to be a really nice and clean number here. Um, you'll note, I don't think this cares very much about whether this is a real chain or not. That's fine. Um, I am lazy, but I will also just have it do this. So we got a problem here. So that's not going to work. So we'll actually have to go to a 16, probably. And it looks like that gives us enough. Um, and it also, quite nicely, uh, gives us an idea of how much, how far in we can go, right, when we make this chain. So we can look at this and we can be like, okay, so we can go out to like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven initials probably. Cool. So if we're doing that, um, we're also going to need to make our, our little mock explanatory here. And I think that that was 1.5 for this guy, right? right? And then we're going to use the gusset tool. And we're going to use the gusset tool um, because I want this to be fast for y'all. Um, okay, so. And what are we at? So. Oh, we're in alliance. Okay, sorry. We're going to do this with the gusset lines tool. So we, now we got our lines. Uh, the way the gusset lines tool works, right, is we're going to want to give it, we'll give it our, its lines to draw around. And then we'll give it some holes to work with. Um, it looks like it's not doing a what, particularly good job guessing, uh, which happens from time to time. And then because I didn't add holes in here, it's not going to have those. So we'll do those. And this is a pretty good example of like a sketch that like is completely just, it only exists to be useful. Um, like that sketch totally just exists in order to be useful when we make our gusset. Uh, and that's fine. A sketch doesn't need to be more than that. Um, and then I like to pull things out just a little bit um, to get it a little closer to the edge. OK. So now we have our, our vertical gusset. We can see that um, we might need to to do a, do something here, uh, but for now it'll be fine. Um, all right, so do that some of that, um, and then the way that we're going to do this outer bit, which very clearly is not like if you look at this image, right? Very clearly they aren't using a three quarter inch. Uh, aluminum tube there. Um, I can't tell looking at this if that's 
carbon fiber or coated aluminum or uh, like just a normal like thunder hex shaft or something. Um, so it's not going to be exactly that, but we'll um, we'll just do our 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 similar uh, best. So we're going to need a twelve point eight seven five inch piece. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. We'll just do a blind, blind centric, twelve point seven five, um, and that. Although I suppose I should. Um, so point oh five eight in this case, right? So this this thickness is just the standard telescoping tube that like 2220 typically gets when we go and buy a tube stock. Um, yours might be different. Uh, 16th inch is common. Like there's, there's a lot of stuff out there. So like if it doesn't match that, don't be surprised. That's normal. Uh, all right. So now we're going to go and we're going to insert all that into here. So we're going to put even more into here and I haven't named anything um, in new CAD things. I do highly recommend naming things and I will try to remember to name things before I put this out there. All uh, right. And we're going to throw another one down at the bottom here. So that kind of cleans up some of the structure on this side. We can also reuse this gusset over here, or we can use a COTS one. I don't have strong opinions on that. So um, in the name of laziness, we're just going to do the same thing over here um, because that'll get us to a kind of semi-complete design. Uh, one of the things I'd recommend that like I always recommend to like newer designers, right? is like focus on getting something that works, right? So part of the reason that I like this one as like a something to clone is because it gives you plenty, it's plenty of space to work with, right? Um, when you try to design stuff that's super compact, sometimes you need to design stuff that's super, super compact, but more often than not, you don't. And you can get away with not making something that's incredibly compact. Um, and it's going to be better for you, better for your team. Um, and you will thank yourself later when it's easier to deal with. Um, I just realized I broke my use the MKCAD. CAD. I need a 16 tooth sprocket. So we'll grab that guy and then we'll grab a 48 tooth. And these are both incomplete, so like, but this will be sufficient for me to bind it to this. Because you see, notice that this sprocket actually just has a has a thing there, uh, has a mate connector there. Uh, that's normal for mate connectors. Uh, Ideal. And this guy does not. This. Well, I guess I got to add a main connector to that at some point. Um, so, one second. What's this distance? So, it's uh, 375 inches. So, it's going to be 316 inches from there. So, we will do what we did over here. And then we'll just offset it 316 of an inch. Cool. All right, so uh, now we got a bunch of this. You'll notice um, if we start adding some of this stuff, you'll notice, actually, that looks pretty good. So that's nice. Uh, 129 length chain, that, um, and then 
one of the things that you can do to kind of um, estimate your range of motion. Do we not have turnbuckles in KitKat? That's great. Okay. Um, Okay. We have it anywhere else in the kick ad. Let's find out. Mm. Okay, so we're going to go. Gonna... Yeah. I will add that. So I always recommend um, having your own labels for stuff. So I just adding this to my rev FRC label so that it's right here for me. To insert things, um, I will try to get that into MKCAD when I have a chance. Um, so this can be nice because what we can do is. Uh, with this kind of where, where it may be. Um, and take that around Z. Always square up so that it is actually like matching. something like that. So if that's one side of this um, and we know that we need it to be uh, eight, eight inches from the other, right? We can take this and we can take this and then we can offset it. Um, but we don't want to probably, we want to fastened. It looks like we're along the x-axis, so we'll say 8 inches. And we can take a look at that. We can see, okay, so we have, that's 8 inches of travel plus a little bit. So we got a little bit of that. That's still a little bit tight, um, but for our purposes, it's probably fine. Um, and that's just kind of how you can check your range of motion on like a turnbuckle. And remember that we calculated that from how many teeth we need to rotate to get um, 180 degrees of rotation. Um, I don't think this mechanism would ever get 100, need 180, so we're probably even better than that. All right, so what have we got here? So now we have kind of the bones of just a pretty normal wrist, right? So we've got structural stuff, we got a closed, square loop, right? I haven't put in hardware here, but basically if we if this is a tube standoff and we throw a bolt into here, then this becomes a a structural member there. Um, this isn't the strongest way that you can do a tube axle because um, this will still be kind of subjected to some of the shear forces that you might get. Uh, and like one of the ways that we might uh, kind of operate around that might be like we throw a two by one brace across here um, that kind of 
adds a little bit more structure here. Anyway, so we got, we got that. We talked a little bit about creating our sprockets um, setup there. Uh, you can see that this kind of a setup, we've got about six inches spare. So this would work down to if this was like a nine inch segment. Uh, this almost exactly would work. Uh, this whole thing can tighten up. Obviously, we'd want a bearing there. We'd want probably appropriate spacers there. And like I said, not going to handle what's going on this whole thing. Um, other than to mention, I just realized I didn't mention this. Um, that these stepped bushings are basically for this exact purpose. So we can, like, we might throw one of these in here. Yeah. Just to kind of indicate who that would be. And we would probably also want, like, appropriate spacers and stuff like that, but uh, or to kind of shift this entire thing over a touch. So how, much, how much clearance do we have there? Yeah, 301. So yeah, this could all move over a little bit um, to make sure that some of the rest of this works. Um, anyways, so that's going to conclude this exact video. Um, obviously, we made something maybe a little bit ugly here, um, but I hope you learned a little bit about designing wrists. Uh, thank you, and I'll see you again next time I make a video.